Hi, welcome back to your study skills project. I hope your project's going okay. Right now we're on week five and during week five, we're going to do two different tasks. We've got a reference list and a glossary. So you need to look on the project map and check out both of those to do this week. They're both pretty short and not too difficult. So they should be okay to get done in just one week. So it's lesson three. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make our references list. You can find that on the project map where it says task four, make a reference list. Let's look at the marks for this task. It says five marks for making a reference list. You need to make sure that your reference list is accurate and exactly how it's supposed to be and that's how you get all of your marks. So here we go, step four, making a reference list. You need to have all of your links for your articles ready to go in a Google Doc to do this. You need to be ready to paste those into the websites we're going to be using to help us. So here are a list of three different reference generators. These are websites that you put the URL of your article into and it will give you exactly what you need to put in your project on your reference list. Your reference list is a list of all of the sources where you got your information. In the academic world, so at universities, there's a very specific way of doing this. We use a style called APA. The generators, you can choose between APA, MLA, a few other styles, but universities around the world use these, so you need to make sure it's exactly perfect because professors are looking very specifically at all the details. So the three listed here are Scribber, Bibme, and Citation Machine. They're all a little bit different, but very similar. If you put the information into all three, you will get the same results. Some of them have a little bit larger group of websites they're looking at. So maybe on one or two, you might not find what you need. Just try a different one. They all work about the same way. So first, let's look at Scribber. In Scribber, you want to choose website. That's the source that you're, you're using for your project. Sometimes at university, you'll be using a journal article, a book, a report, something like that. But right now you're using a website. So we're using the Kids World Travel Guide. So we need to go to our sources and copy that link. We're going to copy it and then we're going to paste it into the box in Scribber. Then we're gonna click the search button. And the search button, we're going to find it's going to pull up the website for us if it has this in, its, in, it, in the websites it's checking. Here it says Norway Facts for Kids, Geography, Norway Animals, Family Travel. Yes, that's exactly the website I've been using, so that's perfect. If it doesn't find it, just try a different one. So then I need to tell it what information I know and don't know. First, I'm going to look at author. I don't know who the author is. I can tick unknown. Um, also, for publication date, I don't know when it's published. Often with websites, we don't know who the author is. We don't know the publication date date accessed, I'm just going to choose today. And I'm going to click cite source. That gives me this citation. It looks exactly like this. I'm going to click to copy and I'm going to paste it into my Google Doc that is my reference list. Here's what my reference list, list looks like when it's done. You can see there are three different sources here. I'm going to show you all the parts so you know what to look for. You can check and make sure your references are done correctly. The website should do it right, but you need to check for mistakes. So first we've got the web page name in italics. That means the letters are kind of off to the side like that. The photo Viking Museum, Museum Nord, period, space, parentheses, ND for no publishing date. If there's a publishing date, that's where the date goes. But right now we put n dot d dot and that means no date. After the parentheses, there's another full stop. And then we have the website name, Museum Nord, and then a period. You notice the capital letters also must be correct here. Next, we've got retrieved from, and the retrieved from is the date that you got this from the internet. This says June 16, 2020, because that's when I got it, but for you, it will be whatever day you put when you put today. And then it says from, and the from is going to be the URL of the website that we got it from. So it says retrieve June 16, 2020, comma from, and then the webpage URL. All of this is in exactly this order, exactly the same way, every time. All the capital letters, full stops, everything, everything, everything must be exact. 
notice where the full stops and, and spaces are, and that should finish your reference list. Once you've done that for your three, four, five, six, however many references you have, you need to finish that document, name it, put it in your Google Drive, and that will be part of your product folder. Our next steps are finishing the note-taking sheet, uploading all of your articles to your Google, Google folder, finishing your glossary, and finishing your reference list. And that will be the end of your task for the week. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher. Uh, your teacher is going to help you with whatever you need. Good luck in your project. I hope everything is going okay. And this is the first task this week. Please watch the video of the second task, which is the glossary. Good luck. Bye.